my glory upon this house, and my glory will abide with you, saith the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We're excited to be here with you today. We have a very special word to share with you. How many know that we're starting a new Hebrew month? It started as of the 1st of September. It is the month of Elul. And uh, some of you got a handout on the way in. But uh, we're going to have you open your Bible with us to John chapter 1 verse 14. As uh, we begin to talk prophetically about the season that we're in. Amen. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word dwelt means to tabernacle or put up a tent. In other words, the Word, Christ, became flesh. God became flesh and He put up a tent among us so He could dwell with us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Wow, in verse 16 it says, And of His fullness... We have all received, and grace for grace. Wow. So this month is very important. Um, it leads us up to the Feast of Trumpets, um, which began on September 29, and they extend to the 8th of October, and then we start Yom Kippur. So we're entering prophetically into a season. And how many know that the fall feasts prophetically are still waiting fulfillment? And so these feasts are very important for us today to be tuned in to what's going on. Uh, let me just give you a heads up about why, why do we acknowledge the Hebrew months? Why are they important? Well, for one thing, God has put his activity into these months. And he wants us to know what he's doing in the earth. And so when you connect with the Hebrew months, you get a glimpse of what he's doing in the earth. Not only that, there are blessings that are given within these months. Now, the calendar that we focus on here in America is the Gregorian calendar. It's made up largely of pagan symbols. You know, January is for a pagan god. March is for Mars. And uh, at June, for example, you know, it recognizes uh, the goddess of marriage. And uh, I don't know if that's why we do a lot of marriages in the summer or not. But in, in any case, um, what's happened in, in the world is that the world has become paganized. And so there's a need to get back to biblical foundations. And one way to do that is to align with and understand the Hebrew months. Now, this month is important. Uh, by the way, the Hebrew months start differently. They don't start the same time ours do. They start with a new moon. The new moon is not the full moon. It's when it's the sliver. You barely see it. And so the new moon, uh, when it's seen and recognized, begins that Hebrew month. And uh, so the sundown of the, of the, um, the 31st of, um, of August, the last day of August, that sundown, which would be the beginning of September 1st, that was the new moon. And so we want to know, well, what's God put in this month? What is the blessing for us? By the way, the Hebrew term for new month is Rosh Kadesh. And what it means, Rosh means head of, Kadesh means month. So in Hebrew, if you hear somebody talking about Rosh Kadesh, they're talking about the new moon or the beginning of the month. Amen. And there's a handout, if you didn't get it on the way in, it gives you um, the sequences of the Hebrew months and when they begin for 2019. And so we're, we're looking at this one today because it has a very special meaning for us. It's said that in this month that the king is in the field. Now, in biblical times, the king would come to visit a city once a year. And it was during this time. Now, ordinarily, if you wanted to see the king, you had to go to the palace, make an appointment, and maybe you would get in and maybe you wouldn't, depending on how important you were. This last year, in 2018... Margie and I and some, some of you here, we, we went to, um, to Jerusalem for the dedication um, of the embassy in Jerusalem and, the, and to celebrate the 70th year anniversary of Israel. Very special time to be there. And we thought we could just go to the dedication. So, you know, the guard is standing there. And had, he's got a gate there. And 
he's got a list on, you know, big old list, and and um, he says, we said, is this where you enter for the dedication of the embassy? He said, well, it depends. Is your name on the list? And we're like, well, we didn't know there was a list. He said, well, then your name's not on it. Well, as it turned out, we got to go up on Media Mountain, which was overlooking the event, and got interviewed uh, by World News and got to talk about the significance of the event. I think that was actually the assignment. <laughs> we got to speak some truth into the media. But uh, in, in any case, the king is in the field. So the idea was that he, the king would come and set up his tent out there in the field, and people from the city could come out there. You didn't need an appointment. You could come out and see him. The tent was open for business. And that you got direct access. You had a problem. You needed justice. Justice could be given. Because the king is in the field. And he would hear your case. And so what we see prophetically in view is that Christ Yeshua came to the earth. And while he was here for those 33 years, the king was in the field. And... Uh, that's why the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, Come confidently and boldly before the throne that you might receive grace and mercy to help in time of need. Free access to the king. But this particular season is when God wants us to come. And it's also referred to as the eye of the needle. And the idea was that if God could, could look through the eye of the needle at your life and see one p particular area, would you be willing to surrender one specific area completely 100% to God? Where is the eye, eye of the needle looking at in your life? What area of your life is God looking at and asking today? Would you give me that one area completely 100% unreserved? Give that to me. That's the eye of the needle. Ask him. If you were to look through the eye of the needle, what would you see? That one area that God wants you to give to him. Amen. Wow. Wow. Praise God. You know, the number nine is associated with what we're looking at today. The number nine is associated because of the year. Now, I don't have my board up here, but we're entering the year 5780, and we're leaving the year 5779. We're leaving, and so that is a nine. Well, nine is, is related to justice and judgment. Moving from one thing to another, one era to another. And, and so if we were to look biblically at some examples of that, um, the man at the gate beautiful in Acts chapter 3, He's been there for 40 years. He's been stuck where in life where he has been and hasn't been able to move. But guess what? At the ninth hour of prayer, along come the apostles. And they're bringing grace. And they're saying, look, this is the time that God's going to restore justice. And the church has ignored you. You've been here for 40 years. But it's about to change because we're moving into a time that God's going to speak. Now, the year that we're entering into, 8-0, if you look that up, it, uh, it is the pay. It means to speak or roar. And uh, the Bible talks about God roaring from Zion. Uh, Joel chapter 3 verse 16 says, The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem, but the Lord will be a refuge for his people and a stronghold for Israel. This is the year, 5780, that God is going to roar out of Zion against the enemies of Israel. And perhaps your enemies. And he is going to protect, establish in the earth. Because he's getting ready to come back. Did you know another significance of the number nine? Yom Kippur took place. It, it's uh, the one feast where he says, on the ninth day you're going to fast. And the evening of the ninth day was Yom Kippur. Why? Because I'm going to do justice. I'm going to remove judgment from you. And I'm going to give you a new beginning. I'm turning the page and I'm opening the new chapter. 
That's where we're at. We're moving from 5779 to 5780, a new chapter that God is opening, and justice is going to come in the earth. In Proverbs chapter 16, verse uh, 15, it says that favor goes before the face of the king like the cloud of the latter rain. Elul was known as a time, uh, because it's connected with the tribe of Gad, it's known as the month of good favor. It's the month that the king lifts up his face upon us and gives us favor. One other thing to note, Elul is an acronym. It's an acronym for I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. That comes from Song of, of Songs, chapter 6, verse 3. If you take the first letter of those words, I am my beloved, my beloved is mine, it spells Elul. This is the month that God wants us to be betrothed to his son so that he's first in everything in our lives. It's the month of restored intimacy with, with Yeshua. Wow. To abide in him. I want to share an example in scripture with you. The story is given in Matthew chapter 15 of the Canaanite woman. And verse begins in verse 21. And then Yeshua went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman from Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me. Elul is the month of mercy. O Lord, son of David, my daughter is severely demonized or demon-possessed. And he answered her not a word, and his disciples came urging him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. They're condemning her. Yo, know, she's one of those. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And she came and worshipped him anyway. Now what was happening here was what, what Christ said is I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's true. The gospel had not yet been taken to the Gentiles. His assignment at that time was for the ten lost tribes who were outside of covenant. And yet, he came to restore justice. And so when she called upon him, son David, she was acknowledging him as the Messiah and the coming Savior. And so it was like he was playing along with the disciples. Master, she's crying out after him. She won't leave us alone. Say, Get rid of her. She's, she's nothing but a dog. And so, you know, he says, I, I'm only sent to the lost tribe of Israel. I can't take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. It seems cruel that he would say that. But he's, he's reflecting back to the disciples their attitude towards her. And she says, well, it's true, Master. I'm nobody. But even the little doggies get crumbs that fall from the Master's table. How about me? He can't, he can't hold back anymore when he hears that. It's, he's just thinking to himself, her faith is just too uh, wonderful. And he says, yes, great faith. You have great faith. Be it done unto you. And so even though it's out of season, even though the gospel's not yet supposed to be going to the Gentiles. Come on now. 5779. She gets to move into the blessing of restored justice. Into 5780. He said, be it done unto you according to your faith. In that very hour, her daughter was healed and set free from demonic oppression. This is the month that we can release justice and ask for justice. We can enter the courts of heaven and we can ask for all of those things that God has promised but haven't yet been given. What are you waiting on that hasn't been given to you? Are there promises yet unfulfilled? Things that you've claimed that you've been waiting for. This is the time you can enter into the tent with the king and you can come into the courts of heaven and say, Father, Whatever the enemy has done and plotted, I'm asking for justice and restoration because 
Guess what? This is the month of restoration. I've been praying for that husband. I've been praying for that loved one that they'll come into a full knowledge of who you are. I've been waiting for that daughter, that son to come into that full revelation. This is the year that you can ask for that to be done. God. Come into their lives and give them the revelation they need. And re, re, Lord, we're praying for that child. Lord, release them from the demonic oppression that's blinding them and keeping them to enter into life and inheritance. We call forth your revelation and your justice into their lives. And the enemy's got to back off. This is the year. Wow. Do you understand that the Hebrew months, this month, it's all about understanding the activity of God and earth and how to align with it and call forth the blessing that he's put in it. The month of Elul. I am my beloved and my beloved is mine. Guess what? If he is your beloved, you get everything that heaven has or contained in him. You get access to the throne of mercy, but also the storehouse of heaven at which everything is there waiting. For my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Yeshua. The riches and glory include everything. There are body parts there. There's wealth there. Everything you could ever ask for is in the house of glory. And his key, faith in the hand of prayer, unlocks heaven's storehouse so that the storehouse opens. My God shall supply all our needs according to the riches and glory that he has through Yeshua. Wow. Wow. What do you need? The tent is now open. You can come in and tabernacle with him. Come on, tell him what you need. When I was younger in life, I went to a church that was largely a black congregation. And they sang an old song, Jesus on the main line. Call him up and tell him what you want. Tell him what you want. He's on the main line. I want to tell you today, he's on the main line. And he's asking us to come. Some of the things that keep us from having that access are the distractions of the world. How many know that you can get so caught up in the things that make you afraid that the fear keeps you from having what you need for access? You know, perfect love casts out fear. And so when we begin to focus on abiding in him, the love begins to come through and it banishes the fear. It, it gets rid of the things that are shutting us out of the tent. So I want to get practical for a minute. What things are keeping you out of the tent? Is it the distractions of life where you just don't have time to be with him? Because I want to tell you something. This is the month of intimacy and being in his presence. Come on. So if you don't have time to pray, you're too busy. S block off some time where the distract. Shut off the TV. Shut off the cell phone. Shut off the Internet. And find some time to abide in Him and enter the tent. Because that's, that's where all the blessings are going to come out of. Sometimes we're so busy battling the world and the things that we feel that are threatening us, that he isn't doing the battle for us. We're trying to do it in the flesh. It may be that this is the month where you need to come alone and get with him and let him do the battle. Let him overrule. And when you're in his presence, you may find yourself in the courts of heaven where he says, I'm making a judgment right now. All of these things that are against you, I'm declaring that they're null and void. Would you like to have some debts canceled this month? I'll take that one. It's abiding in Him that brings the breakthrough. 
And I, I know we know these things. But in practice, it's difficult to get there because the devil will make sure that we're so busy and distracted that we don't have time to just be in his presence. Psalms 91 says, Hide me in the secret place of the Most High and under the shadow of the Almighty, and he will rescue your feet from the snare of the fowler and cover you with his wings. That's a picture of a lul that's coming into the tent. And in the Hebrew, that means... He'll put you in the untouchable place where the enemy can't touch you, can't reach you, the secret place. Are you dealing with some oppression? Are you dealing with some battles, some spiritual battles? Stop fighting and learn to, re to rest in him and get into the secret place because he'll take your feet from the snare. Well, pastor, I'm dealing with all kinds of sickness and health problems and, and I don't know what to do about them. Look, when he rescues your feet from the, from the snare of the fowler, he will rescue your feet from all the damage that the snare did to you. And if that includes sickness, he'll rescue your feet from the snare of the sickness. Do you believe that? So therefore, we determine we're going to come into the tent and have some time. Could you give him an hour a day? You know, he said to the disciples, can you not tarry with me one hour? I challenge us today. Give him an hour of your time and get into the tent this week. Maybe you can give him more than that, but give him an hour. Get your word, get some worship music, get in his presence, abide in him, shut off everything else. Please shut off the cell phone because I promise you, if you're trying to be intimate with him, it will ring. You know what I mean? And when the devil says, you know, you need to make that call, you tell him to shut up. Don't you make that call. You know what I'm talking about. I, I get lots of that kind of stuff happening in my world. But I'm determined. I'm going to be in the field with the king. Because the king is in the field this month. And do it this coming week and then determine to do it every week this month and then determine to do it for the rest of the year. Come on. This month will align you and set you up for the entire year. Now the Jews believed as we're, we're moving up to Yom Kippur that they would say to each other, are you sealed for the new year? And the reason was this. Everything you do between now and the close of Yom Kippur is written in the book and that will seal your destiny for the coming year. And so they would say to each other, are you sealed for the new year? And what they meant by that is, have, have you aligned yourself with God? Have you made things right with other people? Are you ready to be sealed for the blessing that's coming to the new year? Well, part of getting ready for that is to abide in the tent with him. The king is in the, the, king is in the field. He's in your field. Oh, now I'm, declare, I'm going to declare some things this year, and I want to encourage you, because you're going to have access to the king, declare some things that you would like to see happen in your life. Next year, I'm going to Israel. Didn't make it this year. I'm going next year, but I might go this year. God give me the blessing, but I'm going next year. We're going to have Bible schools opening in at least six nations in Africa this coming year. I'm going to declare some things. A financial increase is coming in my life so I can serve the king and bless the kingdom. Not because uh, Jerry wants all of the toys that he wishes he had. No. I want to see an increase so I can bless the king of glory and bless his kingdom. And I'm declaring it's coming. Get bold and ask God to give you the amount you should claim. Ask him to double what you've had this year. Triple it. Look, he has the cattle on a thousand hills. This is the time that the king is in the field. Ask him for everything you'd like to see coming. Are you sealed for the new year? And I want to tell you, God is not planning on leaving you out. Homer's going to be preaching some of this when it, uh, as we get ready for the Feast of Tabernacles. But, you know, it was said that that during the Feast of Trumpets, which is coming up towards the end of this month, 10 days of trumpets or 10 days of awe, Feast of Trumpets, 
the rabbis, it, it, it's, you're not going to find this in Scripture, but the rabbis say that the trumpet was blown 99 times. I thought, you know, that's interesting. How many sheep did the master leave to go find the one? 99. You know what that tells me? During the Feast of Trumpets, when they blow those trumpets 99 times, the, the master, the shepherd's in the field, and he's looking for that one lost sheep. And if you're that one lost sheep, he's looking for you. Because before the, the day closes on Yom Kippur and seals you for the next year, God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be favored. He wants you to have as his child everything that he wants to give you for this coming year. And so when those trumpets sound, 99 times the blast of the trumpet is telling us he's looking for those sheep. If you don't feel like you've been blessed and you feel like you've been left out, he's looking for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's close with prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, as we close today, we're getting ready to enter the year 5780 and leaving the nine behind. And we're declaring justice is coming in our lives just like the Canaanite woman, just like the man at the gate. The ninth hour is coming, and it's here. And we're getting ready to transition into the years, the next ten years of blessing, the next ten years when you will roar from Zion. The lion of the tribe of Judah will roar from Zion. And when he roars, the enemy is defeated. Justice comes forth. His people are protected, but more than that, his People are nourished and fed and blessed and raised up as a mighty arm in the earth. And so, Lord, we, we release the sound of the trumpet one more time, and we're declaring right now that the lion is going to roar from Zion. <laughs> Hallelujah. May he bless you as you tabernacle with him because the king is in the field. Amen. Amen. Prophet David, do you have a word?